magnify the Lord with me. Yeah. Hallelujah. And let us exalt his name together. First giving honor to the spirit of Christ, to the angel of this house in his absence, Pastor Harris and First Lady Harris, to the saints of God that are assembled here, to Mother Warren, um, it is, and to all of you, it is no, uh, uh, but nothing but history that I am back at New Life Missionary Baptist Church um, when I was uh, given a license to preach. Pastor Warren invited me out. As this is my first church that I preached at uh, outside of Pleasant Grove. Um, and now that I have been ordained, this is the first church that I've preached at outside of Pleasant Grove. As ordained reverend of the gospel. So I, uh, my, my heart, and I've been back here many, many times uh, through your transition and um, Pastor Harris. Um, like a big brother to me, has always invited me and encouraged me. I can call him. Uh, whenever he calls on me, I falter not. And uh, I'm willing to come and do whatever uh, the Lord has in that particular time. So I am blessed for the Lord to be here. I've already introduced most of my, if you hear the noises, it's my grandchildren. Don't worry about it. That's what they do. That's <laughs> just what, I know my brother and his, is that for those twins? No. Wow, sons of <laughs> triplets. Wow, that's not, I'm not I'm not worried about children. That's what children do. Amen. Children, Amen. children make noise and praise the Lord. Amen. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and move. I'm not a long-winded preacher. I I, I I stole the children away from Pleasant Grove this morning. So let me just say. Uh, I bid you greetings on behalf of our pastor, uh, the Reverend Arthur J. Patterson. I, I stole them away with the promise that I would have, uh, we would be back for communion at 1230. And you know that I'm not a long-winded preacher. Um, I'm, I, I like to say that I do my assignment and I get out the way. Amen. Um, but I will, if you could just give me a few well-placed amens every here and there. You know, don't, and I, I'll just, just speed me along. There's a few of them now. Don't be, don't, be, don't be happy with it. It's a few. There's a few, uh, and, and, I'll, and I'll speed you right along, so I'm not going to delay this. There is a word from the Lord this morning uh, coming from the book of Psalms, uh, from Psalms, rather, uh, chapter 139. And if you have your Bibles this morning, and don't mind journeying with me to Psalms 139. And we're going to look just two verses. We're just going to look at two verses in Psalms 139, verses 23 and 24. And if you don't mind standing uh, for the reading of God's Word, and I'm going to ask if you would read it with me. Psalms 23, Psalms 139, 23 and 24. And if you don't mind reading it with me, it says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way of everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. The grass withereth and the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. For a subject this morning I have been given, be careful what you pray for. Mm. All right, man. Amen. Be careful what you pray for. Let's pray. Father God. A truly an amazing opportunity, O God, to come and stand before your people once and again, O God. Like I said, you've already spoken to me. Now speak through me a word of your, to, for your people, O God. I pray right now that you increase and I decrease, O God, that they may see more of you and less of me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Be careful what you pray for. Have you ever been excited about something? I mean, like really excited about the next chapter in your life, but also kind of nervous in a real strange way. Yeah. Maybe there was a new job on the horizon and you have been uh, certified and qualified. You've already been through all of the uh, processes to get the new job and you're ready to start but something in the back of your mind, in the back of your head, in the back of your subconscious just makes you nervous about that one particular thing. Maybe you, you studied for the test. You studied and you prepared yourself and yet 
on the day of the test, you got just got butterflies floating around in your stomach. Mm-hmm. Remember the, remember that, just to be careful, what you pray for. Yes, yes, if I told you this morning that some prayers, some prayers that we pray uh, definitely makes God uh, uh, allows God to answer them. So there are some prayers that we pray that God will Im- immediately answer. Mm-hmm. Amen. But before he gives us the answer, I want to warn you. I want to warn you one more time. Be careful what you pray for. Yes. Now, now we must all agree that most of us stay in the safe zone of prayers. I mean, the you know the safe zone sounds a little something like this: Lord, bless me. Lord, bless my mama and my daddy. Lord, Lord, bless my children. Keep them. I mean, that's the same thing. Lord, just go ahead and bless my church. I mean, all all that's well, you know. Lord, bless me with a good paying job. You know, even, Lord, keep my refrigerator full and my my car full of gas. I mean, these are safe prayers. You know, they really don't require a lot for us to do. But we're asking the Lord to do it all. It's it's okay. It's okay to pray safe. As a matter of fact, I encourage you to. I mean, even after this, uh, uh, even after we leave church, when you get home into your quiet time, pray one of those safe prayers. Please, Lord, bless that, bless that preacher. I don't mind. I don't mind. Bless, call me by name, William Anthony. I don't mind. Pray, pray the safe prayer. And that's all fine because, because the safe prayers get answered too. Yes, yes. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, and, 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 but there are some prayers that uh, invite God into our lives in such a way that dramatic things sometimes, even traumatic things, will take place. And we call, I like to call those prayers, life-changing prayers. You see, when we pray these life-changers, we we become a different person on the inside. And we have to be careful because sometimes we're not ready for the change. You see, when we pray these a life, a kind of pray, a changing prayers, uh, uh, they are, get answered, and we have to be ready. We put all, we put all kind of things at risk when we pray life-changing prayers. You see, these life changers, they, 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 they change the relationship that we have with other people. You see, these life changing, the people we used to hang out with, yes. once we pray those life changes, you know, Lord, change my life. Yes. You know, we can't hang out with those same types of people. Right. You know, the, the things that sometimes we just, all the kind of mess we get ourselves into sometimes. Yes. It's these life changing prayers uh, uh, that we have to really think about before we pray. Now, all of us should aspire for these life changing prayers. But we have to be careful because all of us are not ready for the change of life, the change that God's going to bring about in our lives. So be careful what you pray for. You see, at the end of a life-changing prayer, it's an opportunity for us to walk closer with the Master. And some of us are not ready to walk closer with the Master. You see, at the end of a life-changing prayer, you know, uh, uh, you know the, the, the folks that we used to hang out with at work, the folks we used to hang out with after work, yeah. the folks we used to hang out with on the weekend, the, right, those, yeah. those crazy folks that we love so dearly, but, you know, the life-changing prayer. Yeah. We got to be careful yeah. what we pray for. Our scripture this morning, I'm not going to be long, but our scripture this morning takes a look at a life-changing prayer from King David. Mm-hmm. You see, David says... David said, you know, God, it would be good if before uh, verses 23 and 24, David's talking about all the wicked people in the world. And he's saying, you know, God, it would be all right if you just killed all the wicked people. Mm. You know, God, David David goes on to say, especially the murderers. It's okay, God. Just go ahead and take David. If you read before verses 23 and 24, David says, it's all right. Go on, go on, God, and take care of those. Take care of those. As a matter of fact, David says, you know, those that take your name in vain. Oh, Lord, David says, I despise those most. Take care, take care of those for you, for me. He says, I can't stand people that do that. The, the people that really get under my skin, David says, take them out. But you know, sometimes it's even uh, so easy for us to look at other people's sin yeah. and not realize that we're creating, committing even the same types of sin. 
So David realizes that, and all of a sudden, in verse 23 and 24, he has an epiphany. Mm -hmm. And he said, wait a minute, whoa, whoa, maybe I'm guilty mm -hmm. of the same thing. Yeah. All right, now. So David comes up and he says, uh, 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 Lord, look at me. Right. Look at my heart, Lord. Yeah. And how many of us know it's, it's even, it's easy, it's so easy to see the stuff that other people are doing yeah. and not realize that we're doing the same Exact thing. Yeah. You gotta pray with me this morning. So you ever come across someone who actually uh, you're thinking? I had a, I had a. This is this is a true story. I had a friend of mine who was in law enforcement, and he calls me up one day. And he said, "You know, I, I follow the Brinks truck as a part of my job, and I see so many. This is the truth. I see so many vulnerabilities in the Brinks, the security they have around the Brinks truck." And he began to design a plan that could actually would rob the Brinks truck. I'm, I'm telling you, look, he was a law enforcement officer. He, he still is. Uh, bless the Lord. He's a Christian. He, and, you know, he sat down. He took it seriously. Sat down at the kitchen table and drew plans up of how to knock off the Brinks truck. And then a few months, maybe a year or so later, somebody actually did almost to the letter what his plan was. Almost to the letter. And I started to wonder, wait a minute, now, did you have something to do with that? But you know, when, when it happened, he was off that day. As a matter of fact, I was out with him, so I know it wasn't him. But you know, he was just so, he couldn't believe that someone would actually, I mean, he thought about it, but he couldn't believe that somebody would actually do it. And so many times in our life, even the evil thoughts that we think, when we, people actually do what we think, should be done or we could do we are so we are so we are, we are so upset that somebody would actually do what we thought about but didn't have guts enough to do come on now somebody somebody, somebody we, we thought about we thought about stealing something from the store but when somebody actually stole something man how could you go in there? You don't have no better sense to steal something from us. So, I mean, I mean, we thought about cheating maybe once or twice, and, and somebody like, oh man, how could you bring that all that up into the house of God? We get so indignified with it. How could you do all that? But but we the ones that actually thought about it, but didn't have you know had wisdom enough. I'm gonna say something else, but we had wisdom enough not to do it. That's right. And one of the reasons, church. That we think that way. One of the reasons that the devil, uh, that we allow, listen to this, that we allow the devil to enter in and into those thoughts into our, into our mind is because we don't ask the Lord to search our hearts. Right now. To show us in us. To show us in us what he sees in us. Let me tell you the story. It just happened yesterday. I was riding down the road with one of the teens. And I said, look in the glove box and pull out this thing that I know is in there. And even as soon as I said, look at the glove box and pull it out, I knew what his response was going to be. He was going to open it and close it and say it's not in there. <laughs> and that's exactly, I could call no name, Gary. I'm not going to call no name. I'm not going to call no name. But he, he, opened it, he opened it up and closed it back and said, nope, Mr. Reverend Cruz, it's not in there. Now, I know it was in there. I know it was in there because I put it in there. Amen. So I said, well, did you move? He says, the only thing is in there, what you say here? The only thing is in there is a, is, a, is a flashlight, a tool, and some pens. I said, well, did you move the pens out the way? He said, no, I didn't move. I said, well, did you move the flashlight? He said, no. Not I said, well, can you go back and look again and move that stuff out the way? And maybe you, and guess what? He went back. He moved, and oh, is this it? That's exactly what he said. But you know, when we examine ourselves, I pay attention now, when we examine ourselves, we do the same thing that Eric did yesterday. We take a peek at our heart and see some stuff that needs to be moved around, but don't even move it around and come back and say, well, I'm not that bad. I, I'll look at that later. I, I know there's some stuff. I know there's some stuff I need to move out of the way, but I'm going to do that a little later. You see, we, and that's when the devil intervenes and gives us those thoughts of the stuff that we know we're not supposed to be doing. All right, now. And when somebody else does it, how upset we are with them yes. that they did actually what we thought we were going to do a long time ago. Yes. You see, sometimes, if not all the time, if we ask God to look at ourselves, we will see a reflection that we knew was there, but we sometimes, we ignored it a long time. Yes. 
But if we look at our hearts, our hearts lie to us. Amen. Oh, our hearts report a condition that's untrue. Now you say, well, now wait a minute, preacher. How could our hearts do that? Because our hearts are pure. Our hearts are true. But see, we're not moving things around. So when we look at it, when we peel back the layers like an onion, we peel back the layers of our heart, we'll get to the core, and we know that the core is good, but the layers around the core need to be removed. Mm. Yeah. And that's like our lives sometimes. We, we know that our heart is pure. You know, we can do bad stuff and justify it by saying, well, the Lord knows my heart. You know, we can, we can justify things. I, I know I'm not supposed to be at this party. I know I'm not supposed to be out hanging out. You know, we finger popping on Saturday night and hand clapping on Sunday morning. I know y'all know what I'm talking about. But there's some things, there's some things that we have to be careful what we pray for. Amen. The wickedness of our hearts tells us that we cannot trust even somebody else. You ever meet somebody... That you are about to either have, a, and I'm not talking about a, 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 a man woman type of relationship or any type of relationship, I mean a friend relationship. You meet somebody and they just don't trust you at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, you hang out, you know, you, you buy them lunch here and there, you, you hang out with them every once in a while, but every time they turn around, they're accusing you of doing something that you didn't even do. You see, that type of person, those types of persons have, have looked at their hearts and they're afraid that you're going to treat them like they have been treating everybody else. You know, you, 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 you get accused of, some folks accuse you of lying. Oh, man, that's not true. You know, you, you tell them the story. But the, 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 we found out that the problem is that, that they're so much of a liar. Hold up now. That they're so much of a liar that they can't trust anybody else. The wickedness of our hearts sometimes even deceives ourselves. But David, David says, Lord, why you're searching me? Could you also test me to show me what my anxious thoughts are? You see, anxious thoughts are produced by fears. Fear of losing everything. I'm, I'm reminded about the folks in Guatemala. I'm reminded about the folks in, 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 in Hawaii with the volcanoes. And y'all remember this. Last year, preachers were preaching about the floods down south. They were, they were preaching about the hurricanes in Florida and the hurricanes in, in, in Louisiana and the Gulf. And, the Gulf and the, you know, all the hurricanes that came through Puerto Rico. You know, they were preaching about that saying, you know, the Lord is trying to wake us up. They're preaching about the fires in California. And, you know, I, I, I remember even myself saying that there can't be any more woods in California. They've been burning for so long. There can't be anything left. They must be consumed already. But, but, but now, you know, we, we fast forward 12 months, and then there's volcanoes. Mm. You know, volcanoes that have been dormant for many, many years are now yeah. erupting. You know, there, there, there's volcano, and not only in the United States, I mean, Hawaii, but also in, in, in Guatemala, I mean, erupting. And you're wondering, is the Lord really trying to tell us something? And I'm here to tell God's people, yes, the Lord is trying to tell us something. The first thing he's trying to tell us is, one, get your house in order. Get your house in order. The stuff that we accumulate, all this, you know, nice cars and fancy, you know, all this stuff. You know, we got the hardwood floors and the house polished. And I mean, all this stuff will pass away. Yes. The only thing that will last is what you do for the Lord. Yes. And he's trying to tell you, he's trying to tell you that, you know, I, I firmly believe grandma preached it. Grandma said the end of the world is, is near a hundred years ago. But now, like I said before, if we ever needed the Lord before we Amen. shown up Amen. need him now because the, the end of the world is near and and he destroyed the earth by water the first time the next time it's going to be by fire you better get your house in order that's a little sidebar so I, just, I gave you that one for free get, get your house in order because we don't know how long we have on this earth we celebrated like I told you my dad's 80th birthday party yesterday and for years he said, you know, I'm not going to see 80. He, for years, he said that. He says, no one in my family has ever lived to see 80. Now, his, his older brother, 
passed away a few years ago. He was 79 and six, seven months. His sister passed away early. His mom, his dad, his great, I mean, everybody in his family. So about three years ago, he says, you know, I paint the garage every five years. So this is the last time I'm not going to see Amy. But you know, the Lord had a different plan for his life. You see, he thought because, and, and, and one, of the, one of my cousins who's a preacher said, the curse has been broken. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's, God is still in the miracle business. He's still breaking chains for all of us. And he broke that chain. But I'm here to tell you this morning, be careful what you pray for. See, all of us need to get to that point in our Christian walk. Well, we can pray that prayer like David prayed. Yes. Lord, examine me. And God will reveal to us those things that we need to straighten out in our life. Yeah. You see, your walk with Christ right now may be fine in your eyes, but when you ask the Lord to examine you, he's going to peel back that onion of your heart and show you some things that you need to get rid of. He's going to peel back that onion of your heart and show you some folks that you need to uh, uh, scrub it off and just throw it. Show you some folks that you need to just let go. But be careful what you pray for. God reveals to us our own sin. It's not about, it's not just about sitting in church on Sunday morning because I'm sure most of you have already heard there's a lot of saints that we thought were saints that are dying right now and going to hell. I mean, there's a lot of church folk Come on now, somebody Amen. pray with us. There's a Amen. lot of church folk Amen. in hell even right now. Yes, yes. It's about surrendering your life to Christ. And not just that not, not just not just a piece of your life. Come on now. Not just a piece of your life, but your whole entire life. Allowing him to complete the work that he wants in your life to prepare you for that next step. That's right. Because no matter where you are in this Christian walk, there is a next step. So you say, well, 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 minister, preacher, reverend, bishop, apostle, I think, thank you, sister. Um, you know, um, I, I, I am at this particular step. But I know that God has waiting for me another step. Yes, so yes, if you yes. want to be, and for my young folks, if you want to be successful in life, I had somebody sit down uh, with me just the other day, and he said, how did you get all this? Looking around at, at the house, and I said, look, first of all, this was inherited. I had nothing to do but be born in the right family. But God is preparing you. For the next, and it's not about it's not about the things that you attain, because because you can't take it with you. That's right. You, you can't you can't take all this earthly stuff with you. But your job is to be prepared to receive the next step when it comes. Yeah. Your next blessing is right around the corner. Amen. You see, rain will come, and it's been coming for a couple of weeks now. Amen. Rain will come. The clouds will hang low. The floods will the, the streets will flood. But God has a blessing when the yeah. sun yeah. comes yeah. back yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. You see, all is not low. Yeah. God has a blessing waiting for you, but you gotta be prepared. To receive it, but I want to tell you, be careful what you pray for. Be careful what you pray for, but be bold enough. Be bold enough to stand and look at the mirror and say, talk like Michael Jackson to the man in the mirror and say, I'm ready to receive whatever it is that you have for me, Lord. But be careful what you pray for. Take a hard look at yourself that God can move you. Yes, to the yes. next level. Yes. But you've got to be ready to get rid of some stuff. I know that's right. You gotta be ready to step away for some folks. Yes. You gotta be ready to step away for some TV shows. Uh oh, that's yes. what I'm gonna go. Yes. You gotta be ready to step away for some things in your life yes. to be prepared for the next step. Yes. Be careful what you pray for, church. But one day you're gonna have to prostrate yourself. Now my when my wife told, first told me that term. I was like, what are you gonna do what? You're going to prostrate yourself. What you talk? But sometimes you have to be in the right position. Oh, help me now. You got to be in the right position to receive what God has for you. You can prostrate yourself before the Lord and say, Lord, I'm ready to receive what you have for me. Be careful what you pray for, but be willing to accept that leadership role. Be willing to accept, be bold enough to accept what God has for you, but be careful what you pray for because sometimes. You know, growing takes pain. That's right. Growing sometimes, you're going to have to go through some stuff. People always ask for the anointing. But you don't understand the process of the anointing. You see, they, they take those olives and they squeeze them. 
They squeeze them so tight until the until the juice fall. You see, the anointing, you have to go through a process to be squeezed and molded and you have to be burnt. There's some burnt stuff that goes into the anointing. You want to be anointed for the Lord, you got to be prepared to receive what God has for you. Be strong in the Lord and, and never give up hope. You're going to do, you're going to do, you're going to do some great things. But you got to be prepared to receive what God has for you. You don't have to live a life of fear. You don't have to worry about the hurricanes and the floods. You don't have to, my grandchildren asked me, you know, as we were watching the TV one time, and the flood waters were overflowing somewhere else, and it said, can flood, can the flood happen here? I said, no, baby girl, you know, we live up on a hill, and, and if, if we flood, everybody in trouble. So, but, but, you know, we don't have to live a life of fear because God has us in his hand. That's right. That's right. Don't forget, church, why you're here. Don't forget your purpose in life. And if you're still trying, I mean, you know, many years I've, I've tried to figure out what's my purpose, Lord. <coughs> what is it that you would have me to do? And the Lord said, just be ready. Amen. Just be ready. Keep clean. Amen. Keep your nose clean. Just stop, stop hanging out with them crazy folks that you know <laughs> that are crazy. And keep and, and then and then he said, be bold enough to pray the prayer like David prayed. Yes, Search yes. me, O God. Mm. Know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Amen. And if there be any wicked way in me, yeah. and lead me in the way of the everlasting. And you won't see your breakthrough coming when you pray that prayer. You won't see your, you know, they, they, you know, in the military they say you never hear the bullet that hits you with well, a breakthrough that's coming. You won't even, how do you know it's from the Lord? You didn't have to, you prepared yourself, but it just came. You prepared yourself and it just came. You won't see your blessings coming. You won't see your righteousness coming. You won't feel your worship getting stronger, but one day you're going to wake up and say, man, I'm here where God wants me to be. Yeah. I'm here doing what God wants me to do. And I, that's my prayer for all of you. To be careful what you pray for, yeah. but be ready for your blessing. Yeah. To be careful what you pray for, but be ready for your breakthrough. Yeah. To be careful what you pray for, but be ready for God's glory because his glory is coming. His glory is coming. His glory is coming. Yeah. Hallelujah, Lord. Yeah. Holy do it. Holy yeah. do it. Holy yeah. do it. What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? Hallelujah. Be careful what you pray for. What you stand to your feet. Bless the Lord this morning. Prayerfully, we had a good time in the Lord. But we would be amiss if there's one this morning. Not knowing what tomorrow holds. But I offer you who holds tomorrow. Amen. Not knowing what the future holds, but I know who holds future. your future. Amen. And his name is Jesus the Christ. Amen. If there's anybody here that doesn't know how to get to heaven, but wants to go to heaven, I offer you to come down front. And I will show you the way. I'll, I'll, I'll explain the plan. The deacons will come up and will show you the plan. The doors of the church are open. Is there anybody this morning? Oh, say. Is there anyone? Most gracious and eternal God, we truly bless your holy name, O oh God. We thank you for the word, O oh God. We thank you, O oh Father, that you have instilled in us the boldness to step out on faith. To be careful, O oh God, what we pray for, expecting a miracle from you, O oh Lord. 
Bless your name, O oh God. Now I want to him that is able to. Now I want you that is able to. Hallelujah. As we depart from this place, O oh God, never from your presence. Now I want to him that is able to keep us from falling, to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And all of God's people say, Amen. 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 Amen.